So please join me in welcoming Scott Watson, Chief Technology Officer at Disney Imagineering. Hi, I'm Scott Watson, and uh, as Paul said, I'm an Imagineer. Um, I make theme parks for a living, like the one behind me. Um, and yes, I found my dream job. Um, so, for people who don't know, um, Imagineering um, is, uh, uh, we consider ourselves storytellers first, uh, placemakers, but we're also technologists. That's the engineering part of Imagineering. Um, so, it's third place, but that said, Disney has been um, a leader in entertainment technology um, from its inception. So, with Steamboat Willie, um, was the first uh, synchronized sound uh, cartoon. The multiplane uh, animation camera, um, Fantasia was the first multi-channel um, audio. So you know, five one. You know, we were eight. What was eight back then? Um, and uh, animatronic figures, the AA figures that bring uh, dead presidents um, and singing tiki birds uh, to life. <laughs> we're also, um, oddly enough, um, known for uh, the world's largest uh, full-motion color holograms. Um, of course, they're not actually holograms. They're actually a 19th century uh, parlor trick called Pepper's Ghost. But um, for us, that's just uh, the point, is that it's not really about the technology, it's about the guest experience. Um, so as much as technology has helped us tell stories, it's also presented some challenges um, because of its rate of change. So um, if you look at the uh, Tomorrowland of yesterday, the 50s Tomorrowland looks kind of like a you know, uh, strip mall with a rocket in it. Um, <laughs> And then the 60s brought the jet age um, streamlined designs, and the, um, our designs in turn got more sophisticated, but our guests got more sophisticated. So we had to just keep adding stuff and adding stuff until we ended up with the, uh, the, the 70s, um, where uh, we sort of just said, that's enough. <laughs> and um, so instead we took a, a new approach, which was um, to uh, frame up tomorrow um, from the view of yesterday, because that's not really changing very much. Um, and changing things is, is really difficult when they're made out of concrete and, and steel. <laughs> um, another uh, technology story was um, uh, where, uh, in this case, um, our problem was exacerbated by uh, Moore's Law, which we're all very familiar with here, and uh, Qualcomm's making a good business on. Um, the, uh, in, the, in the 90s, we developed a thing called Aladdin. It was a virtual reality uh, uh, attraction with uh, um, our own uh, uh, custom HMD and about a million dollars of silicon graphics, um, if you remember them, uh, uh, reality engines um, behind each guest. And this was an attempt to actually get a leg up on, on Moore's Law, knowing that you know, they'd be following this stuff down over the next couple of years. The problem was that before we knew it, a three-pi uh, image generator was being outperformed by a game box. And so, uh, Anyhow, so that was, that, that was uh, not so good for Aladdin, but it's, uh, but it's been good for us. And um, the, uh, so nobody here is going to argue with the statement that uh, computers are you know, getting smaller, more ubiquitous, better connected. And uh, we at Disney believe in these little computers that talk to each other. Um, and uh, so we've been um, a little more proactive this time with things like Kim Possible. So in uh, 2009, we introduced a... Uh, Communicator, you see here, it's not a phone. It's a communicator. If you know Kim Possible, Kim Possible is one of our um, uh, Disney Channel uh, shows, and um, the uh, people loved it. So this was in the age of feature phones. So we had to provide people with communicators. Um, the uh, we took advantage of the GPS and the network connectivity to uh, trigger um, in park, well, both on phone and in park um, uh, interactions. Um, the uh, and then, because everybody has a phone and we can depend on that, um, we're now uh, working with um, advanced voice applications like Otto. So um, Otto is a robot. He's actually, you can call him if you like. Um, he's, he's, he's up and running. Um, and um, he is here to help you have a good time at uh, our parks. And so typically answering um, questions like wait times or when is this show or how do I get a dining reservation. And we'll here's a short audio segment. Route both parks. How else can I help you? Can you tell me if Mickey Mouse is close to them? Some kids are hard to understand. One moment, please. Here we go. The best place to meet Mickey is in his house. 
Well, so yeah, you know, so the, what's great about, about Otto is um, that you know, kind of he works. Um, the, uh, sometimes we have problems getting data connections, just the same way some people do in large conferences. Um, for our guests with smartphones, however, we're offering uh, something, uh, it's our current offering, we call it Mobile Magic. Um, I feel like uh, this is that whole issue with technology going so quickly. It's, um, it feels so 2009 in some ways, um, but, it, but it does work. It's GPS enabled maps, um, but of course we have issues with GPS um, because it only works outdoors and we have so many things we like to do on the inside of our buildings where we get no GPS connectivity. Our maps are limited to uh, plan view, which again is great for, especially an older person who understands how to read a map, but um, little kids, <laughs> I mean, and some people don't, aren't that good at that, but we think augmented reality would be a great um, addition for that, especially for wayfinding and for games. We spend a lot of time in lines um, for our attractions, and we like to make those lines more interactive and more fun, and, and make them at least feel shorter. Anyway. So uh, we hope to, uh, that with all the innovations we're seeing today, that we can make um, uh, mobile magic a lot more magic. Um, and I have one more thing uh, to show before I pass it back to Paul. And uh, it was basically, remember I said that we believe, we believe in uh, little computers that talk to each other. So clap if you believe in little computers talk to each other. Computer bubble lift. Um, so uh, uh, me. Mickey's uh, magic ears that, that, that glow with the show. These little guys um, uh, are uh, under the same sort of show control that we use for um, our lights and the fountains of attractions like World of Color. Um, but not only do they listen to commands from us, they actually talk to each other as well in that little computers that talk to each other mode, which we of course call ear to ear mode. <laughs> but let's see you now. So one is pretty, as you can see. Um, but let's see what happens when we put a whole bunch of them together um, at uh, the uh, World of Color, which we just started doing as of a week or so ago.